Ryan, uh, there's so many Filipino boxers that have uh, that that are trying to carve a name for themselves in the world of boxing. Uh, let's take a look at uh, four of these uh, gentlemen who uh, might or will probably be uh, names that the public will start to be hearing more from in the uh, in the coming months or in the coming years. Let's start off with a uh, super flyweight by the name of KJ Kataraha. Yes, KJ Kataraha, very exciting young fighter. And when you're looking for the next guy to latch on to, to follow, uh, you, you're looking for a number of things. You're looking for uh, excitement, you're looking for skill, you know, uh, heart, you're looking for personality. And in a lot of ways, I feel like KJ Kataraha embodies all of those things, um, you know, in certain terms of balance. Now, he's 26 years old. Uh, he was a, a star in the amateurs here in the Philippines. Um, he's 13 and 0 right now, 11 knockouts from Talisa Sabu. Uh, he turned professional in 2015. Now, what I like about his story is that. He, he got into boxing because of the anime show uh, Hajime no Ippo, right? And in a lot of ways, he is the real life Hajime no Ippo. Um, Ippo, Ippo Gala, he was balancing boxing in school in the show. Uh, and he did the same thing as, as, a, as a pro. He was studying uh, criminology at the University of the Visayas while also being this big you know, prospect, this very hype prospect back at the old Ala gym. Uh, he was fighting on, on na nationwide TV and then going and taking the jeepney to school in the morning. Um, but very intelligent in and out of the ring. Uh, I remember when I would go down to the Allah gym, he would be like one of the few guys I could speak to and converse with in English. So I always appreciated that. <laughs> that helped me a lot. Um, but he, he has a very exciting style. He's strong. Um, he can box. He has the mindset of not letting the other guy get the last punch in. So he's very good at winning rounds as well. He wins exchanges, wins rounds. Uh, he does a lot of interesting things to promote himself. Now, he's when, when the Allah gym closed up, he moved over to the Sandman Boxing uh, Stable mm -hmm. in Jensan. In uh, but, you know, he promotes his, himself in some interesting ways. Like he has his own uh, YouTube channel where he posts a lot of different content. We, and we see that a lot with some of the younger boxers uh, mm -hmm. that are coming up now, like Yumir Marshall and Irish Magno. So the, the, he has sort of an entrepreneurial uh, mindset as well, but um, he just fought last month. He stopped uh, Chris Alfante in seven rounds and would like to see him get a little bit more active uh, coming out of the pandemic because he's 26 years old. This is the time where he needs to be making a move. Um, but in terms of ability and experience, you can't get better schooling than sparring with uh, Doni Mietes. Uh, for now, looking at how the uh, top ten of uh, top ten boxers in this division uh, is concerned, who do you think will be a good uh, next fight for uh, KJ? I mean, for right now, I think that Kataraha needs to stay busy. Right, that's the important thing for him because um, he need he still needs to experience. He's been fighting at the ten round level, uh, so he's closer than you know his number of fights would suggest but i i don't know that he's ready yet to jump from someone like chris alfante to going to fight like kose tanaka for instance or mm -hmm. obviously not like a chocolatito gonzalez that level of champion yeah um yeah. you have to have that interim so i would like to see him jump into the top 15 like you know go out some of these guys um i i think that it's it, it's it's a bit tough because that those are very deep divisions, but he is rated, uh, you know, with the, uh, the WBO for instance. So he can take those steps. Our next fighter to, uh, to talk about is, uh, Mike Plania, who's a super bantamweight. And uh, so far, Mike uh, Plania's record is, uh, 25, uh, 25 wins with 12 uh, knockouts and, uh, only one loss so far for this 24 year old. Where does he play in the world of the super bantamweights, Ryan? I mean, you know, it, it's kind of interesting for him because he can be a super bantamweight. He, he, he had fought as a bantamweight in the past. So, you know, it's, it's tough to, I think, I think for him, uh, he has to pick a division. And I think he's going at 122, super bantamweight, as you mentioned. Uh, he was supposed to be on the big, uh, 
uh, ban uh, Super Bantamweight card on Showtime next month. I'm told that that probably isn't going to happen right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's a guy that, you know, you can really turn him loose. You know, he's, he's 24 years old, but yeah. he fought uh, Josh Greer, uh, who was the Bantamweight uh, number one contender. Uh, last year, right when, when the top ranked bubble cards started coming out, and he was on one of the first ones, maybe even the first one, and he pulled off a big upset in, in beating Josh Greer, uh, which was interesting because Greer was the number one contender for another Filipino, John Real Casimero, but it was another Filipino who did his business for him. Um, but Planya, you can kind of turn him loose against anyone. He, after fighting Greer, you know, taking a step back, you know, it's it might be a little bit difficult. That was in June of 2020 when he fought Greer. He did not fight again for, uh, you know, about a year or so. It was kind of, uh, he, 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 he took a, a stay busy fight and he was not um, as active uh, as a result of the pandemic. But uh, I, I would say, he, let him get another win or two and, and, and put him in with anybody. Cause you gotta remember his one loss was against a, a former world champion as yes. well. So, you know, right. that's, he, he, he's not someone who's going to be overawed. And, you know, he's fought the world championship level uh, in the amateurs when he was, uh, he represented the Philippines at the 2011 uh, Youth World Games. Um, uh, that that was, uh, you know, the culmination really of a, of a long 300 fight amateur career. So um, interesting thing is his nickname is Magic Mike, right? Now Magic I'm, told Mike. It, I'm told it's because he does magic things in the ring. And not because he sounds like karaoke. He has a lot of tricks. Um, yeah. I, 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 but, and he also, he doesn't work as a male stripper with Channing Tatum. So uh, <laughs> it, it's strictly a boxing thing. Okay. So um, let's get that clear. Uh, but he trains out in Miami with Mauro Fernandez, the Cuban trainer. And um, he gets great sparring out there. Uh, he, he's worked with uh, guys like Guillermo Rigondeaux. So uh, he, he's someone making a move in, in, in his career. I think in the next 12 months, we'll see him uh, either move into position for a world championship or already fight for a world championship. That's nice. And now our next fighter is a former Olympian who, for me, uh, it's kind of entered professional boxing kind of belatedly already, as he is already in his 30s. But uh, since he uh, debuted in uh, January of 2019, he's already amassed uh, a seven uh a seven win card with five uh, uh knockouts so far uh the king's warrior former olympian charlie suarez it's it's it, like as i've said uh ryan uh charlie already is in his 30s is it already a bit too late for him to enter the professional boxing ranks well you know the, what they say is like um 30 is the new 20 in some ways so it's <laughs> he's uh you know, it's it's interesting that we've been talking about an Olympian turning professional because prior to Bariga, uh, Mark Anthony Bariga, who was the the last Philippine Olympic boxer to turn professional? It had been a long time. Like the top mm -hmm. guys, you know, just stayed on the national team forever and they, they collected their stipend. But Suarez is sort of entering, he's leaving the shark cage, so to speak, mm -hmm. and he's making it his way. So that tells you that he has some belief in himself that he's able to make that bet on himself instead of mm -hmm. uh, just sticking around and, 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 and collecting, you know, his paycheck every, every month. So, uh, but you're right. He is 33 years old. He has a deep, deep amateur background. So, you know, I, we mentioned this, he's at, he fought at the uh, 26, uh, so into the 2016 Olympics. And, you know, he lost his first fight against the great Britain boxer, but that was a very close fight. And, you know, uh, Joe Cordino is a good prospect now as a professional, uh, but he had his two golds at the uh, at the Sea Games and the silver at the 2014 Asian Games. And we we're talking about like uh, someone who has faith in themselves. He was competing uh, for, I believe it was Milan at the uh, Aiba uh, Pro Boxing, you know, tournament. Yeah. And he uh, he had shoulder injuries, I believe, on both shoulders, if I'm not mistaken. And he went in there and he boxed against the prime Vasily Lomachenko. So if that doesn't tell you that he has self-belief, nothing does. He went the distance there. So uh, he's a very tough guy, but he's got to make a move now. He's got to make a move. He's done, he's done 130 pounds. So, you know, he has that going for him that he is a larger boxer, someone who can, you know, uh, maybe get a little bit more attention than some of the flyweights could. But he's, he's got to make another bet on himself and, and – 
find a way to get to the U.S. and 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 fight some top guys because you know, time it's, is it's, not. It's, it's you you mentioned about his wealth of amateur experience uh, with a record so far that, as I've mentioned, seven wins, five by uh, knockout. Uh, is that wealth? of experience really going to be the the thing that's going for him uh you know uh with that wealth of experience be really the the factor that will get him to to approach being a professional better than everybody else that have gone through the uh, the motion so to speak yeah because there's nothing that suarez hasn't seen in the ring so when you fought all those kinds of fighters, especially in Asia, because mm. there's such a diversity of styles, and you know, you'll you'll in the international level, you'll you'll meet like boxers, brawlers, people who switch dances, people mm. who come at you from all different angles, long boxers, short boxers. He's seen it all, so that will give him the confidence and the composure that he needs, uh, you know, to excel at at the at the championship level as a professional. Uh, the trade-off can be that um, that's a lot of wear and tear on your body. You know, we mentioned that he's had injuries in the past. Uh, it, it could be very draining uh, physically, emotionally, mentally to be a boxer for all those years. That, that's why Manny Pacquiao, it, it, it kind of works to his advantage that he only fights very like, infrequently because he only has to love boxing for eight weeks. And so he, he loves <laughs> boxing for eight weeks at a time and then he forgets that it exists. Uh, yeah. But for some of these fighters who have these long amateur careers, the burnout, when they turn professional, they're doing it because it's, you know, a career, not because, you know, they're so hungry to prove something. So, uh, yeah, they, there can be a draw. There could be a, a, a trade off there. From the amateur Charlie Suarez to the professional Charlie Suarez, what have you seen that you liked? Um, what I always liked about him as, as an amateur was that he had this great it, he entered the ring like he was the boss and that kind of means something to me because uh it tells me hey listen i've been here i've done all these things like when he when he went to entered uh the sea games in 2019 he looked like he was you know in charge of things so that kind of that, that was important in the way that um he's expecting to win he has the mindset mm -hmm. of a winner and I think that now as a pro, he looks more seasoned. Like he's not going out there and being impatient. He's taking his time, setting up his, his punches. And that's why he's got five knockouts and seven wins. Um, I don't think he's a massive puncher, but he does mm -hmm. better because he takes his time. Well, uh, from uh, the most senior, so to speak, of the uh... – of the foursome that we're going to talk about today, we now go to uh, the 22-year-old, actually uh, the youngest of the four uh, boxers that we are discussing. Uh, he is the Doberman, Dave Apollinario, who has a record of 15 uh, wins, 10 by knockout, and still hasn't lost in his uh, professional career, which began. Uh, in 2017. Now, how do you rate this Southpaw, Ryan? You know, it's interesting. He's a Southpaw and he has a tool that I don't often see a lot of Filipino fighters use, and that's the jab. And uh, when you have a good Southpaw jab, and it's a confident jab as well. Um, mm -hmm. That is, that kind of sets him apart, I think, because he's not an overawing sort of like dynamo like he's not going to go out there and overwhelm you and and, mm -hmm. and just uh make you look like you know like you know just 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 tear through you he could set up his punches but he throws them in combination and he is defensively responsible so he has very good schooling you know even though he didn't fight at the international level that the way that someone like um Planya had or mm -hmm. um or or suarez you know, he knows what he's doing. He knows who he is. He comes from a boxing family. Uh, so he's been doing this for a long time. He's 22 years old, but he's very mature for his, his age. And, you know, very intelligent, as I said. But, you know, he fought, um, he was a Philippine National Games youth champion. Um, he won Palarong Pambansa before turning professional in 2017. Uh, so he's, he's someone who's really 
loves the sport of boxing. Uh, I still want to see him take that next step going abroad, uh, maybe getting some more experience sparring there, or even, um, you know, start campaigning in the U.S., He's promoted by J.C. Mon and Kill of Sandman Promotions, so mm-hmm. uh, Mon and Kill has some uh, connections abroad. Hopefully, he can use them and get Apollinario some uh, some more exposure to use those skills that he has against. For a lot of these boxers who are uh, well, some of them are based uh, in Manila. They get to fight some bouts uh, in all parts of the country. Will it be really prudent at this point in their careers to just uh, uh, pack up and uh, go and uh, and stay in the United States, for example? Yeah, it would. It would because it's when you are only sparring in a certain area, even if it's the best boxers that you're sparring against in that area, you're going to get used to only competing against that style. And you need to see every style like um, someone like Floyd Mayweather. If you look at his early like boxing career, he fought everyone. He every kind of style that there was, you know, he he had seen it all. So when you can do that and you can adjust to, to things, you don't need to necessarily come up with specific plans for boxers because, you know, you get in the ring. Like, that's why you see a lot of the top fighters. They don't. They say they don't watch tapes of their opponents because they've seen it all. They know they take the first round to, to get a feel for what the guy has, and then they adjust. Uh, and and, and it, it they, gets they, to be in a nutshell. It gets to be instinctive already on their part. Once the they they start uh, getting into. The swing of things. Let's say if, if they start uh, let's say in, in an actual fight, the first uh, minute will be already an indicative for them as to how their opponent is. I think it's important. I think it's important not just that, but also for your confidence, because when you're out there and you're sparring with different fighters um, and you're doing good against foreigners, that does help the boxers. That that that's one thing that uh, you can't recreate because you're be- you're beating up your own countrymen. It, it's kind of like all right, yeah, I'm just. Maybe I'm just the best here, but you want to get a feel for how you do, you know, against the world. Well, of, of course, uh, that's one thing which uh, this young fighter will be able to develop in the uh, in succeeding months and the succeeding years. But uh, we are uh, talking about the promising fighters that uh, a lot of our audience will be seeing. And I hope all of you people that are watching the program support the boxers that are carving a name for themselves and watch them, support them. Because I'm sure you will get a big kick out of watching all of their fights. <laughs>